atoms and isotopes then? Well, firstly, what is the actual size of these things? We're talking the radius of an atom is 10 to the minus 10 meters. So that's a tiny size. But the radius of the nucleus is 10,000 times smaller than that. It's 10 to the minus 15. Now, my pro tip here is that you need to know these values and you also need to be able to use them in standard form. So these are very, very small values expressed in what we call standard form. The Bohr model is the model that we actually use and it fits all the evidence that we have at GCSE. Now the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. Now protons are positive and neutrons are neutral. Electrons are negative and they orbit the nucleus at fixed distances which we call energy levels. So that's our model of the atom that we use all the time that's called the Bohr model. That's our current best guess at what the atom is like and it fits all the evidence that we have and that we need to use at GCSE. That's called the Bohr model. There are different ways that we can actually represent that same isotope. So we can actually write it like this, helium-4. So that's the chemical name, helium, that's a helium, and its mass number is 4. It means there are 4 protons and neutrons. There's a total of 4 particles in the nucleus. We can write it in nuclear notation, and that's this, 4 and 2, and then HE is the symbol, capital H, little e. 2 is the proton number and 4 is the mass number or nucleon number, the number of particles in the nucleus. Or you could see it in the periodic table represented as a card like this. And again, the larger number will always be the mass number because that is the number of protons plus neutrons and the smaller number is the number of protons. You don't need to use a full periodic table in physics. You do in chemistry, but you don't in physics. But they may give you part of it. They may say, here's a part of the periodic table. Or they might say, here's the card from that isotope in the periodic table. There's one more really important bit of information about the structure of the atom, and it's these ideas of energy levels. Now, energy levels are how atoms interact with light. So when a photon comes along, a single piece of light comes along, it can give its energy to an electron. And if that electron absorbs that energy, it will be raised up the energy levels. It will be given energy. And that creates these things called absorption spectra. Essentially, there is only these certain different colors of light that each atom can absorb, and that's because of its energy levels that it has. It's because of where those electrons can orbit. It's because of how much energy those electrons can have. It's a really tricky idea, but this is why different materials absorb or em even emit different colors. So once that electron is up there on the higher energy levels, it can also fall down. Now when it falls down energy levels, it emits light, it gives out photons. So when a photon of electromagnetic radiation is emitted from uh, an atom, an electron moves down the energy levels and that creates these things called emission spectra. So in just the same way as it can only absorb those certain colors of light, those certain frequencies of light, it can only emit those certain frequencies as well. So that's why we get this dark spectrum with these just few colored bands. This is a really important thing, not just for this topic, but actually that this idea of spectra comes back when we talk about space later. So this is an example of where they can make GCC physics really quite hard.